Uh, today with Lewis structures, you're going to focus on um, some more complicated examples. That can include polyatomic ions, which we're going to start with, where the formula is a little bit more complicated. So you have to count valence electrons a little differently. And there's also situations where you might not have enough valence electrons to give everybody a complete octet, or you have too many valence electrons. Uh, and so I'm going to show you all of those cases and how to handle them, okay? So we're going to start with a polyatomic ion, and this is the um, chlorate ion, and the formula is Cl, that's chlorine, O3 minus, okay? Well, you know that the minus basically means that an electron has been gained, okay? So when you're counting valence electrons, you have to take into account that charge. So we're still going to start with step one, which is to count valence electrons. So as you know, chlorine has seven, okay? Oxygen has six, but there are three oxygens, so that's 18. But what you also have to do is take into account this extra minus. So because there's an extra negative charge, that means that you have an extra electron. So normally we would add seven plus 18 and get 25, but that extra charge is giving us an extra electron which means we have 26, okay? Um, so if it's a negative charge, which most of them are, you're gonna add electrons to your total. If it's a positive charge, like in ammonium, then you're going to subtract that electron from the total, okay? And that, and that sums it up there. All right, so, but you're still going through the steps, same steps you did before. Again, the only difference here is that your electron count is going to take into account that minus charge, okay? And if for some reason you had two minus, that you would be adding two instead of one, all right? So again, steps. Now it's the same thing you've been doing. You're going to put chlorine in the middle, surround it with three oxygens. That's two, four, six. That's steps two and three, okay? We've now used six electrons out of 26. We're gonna put dots on the oxygens now as unshared pairs. I don't think you can see those very well, so I'm gonna make them a little thicker. Give me a second. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so remember, I have used six, so I'm down to 20, right? And then I just drew 18 on there, so now I'm down to two, step five, those last two go on the central atom. Now everybody has eight. However, this is the other thing that's different with polyatomic ions. Because this is a polyatomic ion and has a charge, you have to put your structure in brackets and put the charge on the outside. So draw your structure, then put brackets around it, and put the charge that's in the formula on the outside of that right bracket. And otherwise that's the only difference, okay? All right, moving on. What if there aren't enough electrons? This is where drawing or counting valence electrons comes into play. It's really important that you count, otherwise you're gonna draw it incorrectly. Okay, so we're gonna do N2 as an example. If you count, nitrogen has five, there's two nitrogens, so that's a total of 10, okay? Uh, this is only a two atom molecule, so there isn't a center. You just connect the two atoms with a line, right? I wanna show you what happens if we go through the normal process. So we have them connected with a line, that's two, and then four, six, eight, 10. I've used all 10 of my electrons, okay? I don't have any left. This nitrogen is happy, but this nitrogen only has four. Now I wanna show you something. This is why counting is so important because if you didn't count your valence electrons and figure out that there's only 10, then you probably would have, and I'm gonna do it with a, um, I'm gonna do it with a red marker to show you. 
if you hadn't counted, you probably just would have drawn this like this, right? And you would have given that right-hand nitrogen uh, six unshared electrons. But that's a total of 14. And this molecule doesn't have 14. It has 10. And that's why counting is so important. So what do you do when it when you don't have enough? Like, we have not met the requirements of step six. Step six is make sure everybody has a complete octet. One of our nitrogens doesn't, okay? Well, you'll see you can change an unshared pair to a double bond. Or if you need to change more than that, you can change it to a triple bond, okay? Watch what I'm gonna do, watch. I'm gonna erase a pair of dots, but not my nitrogen, oops. Um, I'm gonna erase a pair of dots. So I had dots down here. Let me make a smaller eraser, okay? I'm gonna erase those dots right there and I'm gonna change it to a line, all right? So I'm still using 10 electrons, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. This one still has eight. This one's getting closer. It has six instead of four. What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna erase another pair on that left nitrogen, and I'm gonna change that to a line, to a shared pair. So now they are triple bonded. They're bonded in three different, three different pairs of electrons are shared, okay? I'm still using 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. They both have eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Everybody's happy, but I've used the 10 that I was given, okay? So that's what you have to do. All right, uh, try it again with carbon dioxide. You might wanna pause it and try to draw it yourself and then hit play when you're ready. That's what I would recommend, okay? So if you're gonna pause, pause now because I'm gonna talk you through it. All right, carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six. There are two oxygens. So if you add that up, you get 16, okay? Carbon's gonna go in the middle. Oxygen on the right, oxygen on the left. Two, four. Okay, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, this one, this oxygen has eight. This oxygen has eight, but carbon only has four and carbon needs eight. So again, we're gonna erase, watch, erase an unshared pair and change it to a shared pair. Do it now again, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, good. This oxygen still has eight. This oxygen still has eight. Carbon has six now, it's getting closer. We're gonna have to do it again. Gonna erase that pair and draw that, okay? Now, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Now all of the atoms have met the octet four, okay? All right, so that double and triple bonds, and those those are called double bonds. So that you have two double bonds in that molecule. In nitrogen, you had a triple bond, okay? That's what you do when you don't have enough valence electrons. Another situation could pop up. What if there are too many, okay? Um, what if there's too many and everyone's octet rule is met, but we still have electrons left over? What do we do? Well, you have to create what's called an expanded octet on the central atom. Um, there are certain elements that are willing to have more than eight, okay? Xenon, which is a noble gas, and normally we think that noble gases don't bond. A couple of them do, okay? Krypton's willing to bond, Xenon's ready, willing to bond, and they go about it creatively because they don't really need to, but they can, okay? Um, and so that's going to result in an expanded octet. So let's look at how that works. Same set of rules, okay? Uh, count your valence electrons. Xenon has eight. Fluorine has seven. There are four fluorines. So that's 28 plus eight, 36. Um, 
xenon's going to go in the middle because it's less electronegative than fluorine. It does not need extra electrons. So it goes in the middle. Okay. Then attach your fluorines. Oops. Okay. Two, four, six, eight out of 36, right? So now I'm down to 28. I'm going to put step four, put dots on your outer atoms. So two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six. How many dots do I just do? 24. Okay. So I did 24. I'm down to four electrons. I've met the octets for the fluorines. Okay, they all have eight. Xenon has eight, two, four, six, eight. But I still have four electrons left. They have to go on xenon, okay? So basically, they go on xenon anyway. Xenon ends up having 12. That's why it's called an expanded octet, like a not bigger than eight, okay? Uh, some of you are probably wondering like, well, how does that happen? So just a quick um, way to show you. Here's how we would normally think of xenon, right? Xenon has eight valence electrons. What it does is it takes two pairs and it splits them mm -hmm. so that they're willing to bond. So like a bond is formed here, 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 and here. So it splits up its unshared pairs to bond with other atoms. And that's how that works, okay? Um, and I think that's it, yeah. Those are your big differences for day, today. So what you're gonna do now is in Schoology, there's a worksheet called Advanced Lewis Structures, okay? And there's six more for you to draw. And those six, uh, relate to these special cases. So you just, again, follow the rules. If it's a polyatomic ion, draw brackets around it and put the charge on the outside. If you don't have enough valence electrons, try some double or triple bonds. And if you have too many, then you have an expanded octet and the extra ones go on the central atom, okay? So give that a try and I will see you on Wednesday.